Welcome to the Write the Docs podcast. It has been a little bit of a break. I think it's episode 34. Yeah, we, we, had, a, we had a difficult 33. We, we needed six months off. <laughs> is, um, but we are back just with two hosts today. Um, Jared could not join us because we were recording at a non-Jared friendly time. And, uh, but he'll be back at some point soon. So let's just, Tom, how are you doing? It looks like you're in a new room. Um, you know, not, I've been here for a while, but yeah, we moved out to Seattle a while ago. And so now I, I, my office is our little front living room, but, uh, yeah, it's, huh. it's, I'm doing great. That's actually good to hear. I may be visiting Seattle in September. Wow. Yeah. That'd be great. <laughs> well, if you come out here, we'd definitely need to meet up because, uh, yeah. for sure. Could do one in person. Anyway, we have someone else <laughs> on the call before we just turn this into a social call. <laughs> Um, Fabric now I can get your first name. Fabrizio Ferry Ferry Fer, 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 I'm sure the double R should be pronounced slightly differently. Benedetti. Benedetti, yeah, yeah, yeah. Benedetti. That's me, that's me. Um, and we're yeah, in Barcelona, joining us from people. Barcelona. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I think you you have certainly been on the channel for the the meetups and podcasts a few times, running the Barcelona meetups, but yeah. we, we've not had you on the podcast before. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Where where are you working? I think you changed recently. Yeah, yeah, another time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This like the second, third change in a year and a half, something like that. Um, so I was, um, <clears throat> I worked uh, for a brief time at New Relic, uh, ten months at New Relic. Then I came back at the previous company I worked for, Open, which is a Dutch uh, fintech company, mm -hmm. uh, doing API docs and also API design, which is also interesting. And I, I hope to talk about that in in Reddit Docs Parade. Um, and now on the 28th, I'm going to start um, as the first uh, European technical writer, European-based technical writer at Splunk. And that, that's pretty exciting. And it'll be fully remote. So it's the first time I, I'll be working as a fully remote writer. Uh, pretty exciting stuff. We actually were discussing this, hence I knew, because we are now both working for rival companies. So, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah the, the, obs the, observability, the observability space is pretty competitive these days. Effectively, Tom does too, just a different department. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And our topic is something that's actually come up at a few um, conferences and meetups in the past, kind of different aspects of it, I suppose. Adding personality to documentation. I think as tech writers, we often try to write as plainly, as, um, as simply as possible. So yeah, is personality a good idea? How is it possible? What level of personality do you add? These are questions we will answer. Maybe Fabrizio, you kick off with your initial kind of um, thoughts behind the idea, and then Tom and I will dig in to some questions. Yeah, so this is a, it's a rather deep topic, quite psychological, I think. And um, I, I would like to maybe start with a question. Like, uh, you know, we work with developers all day. And, and usually when you see at the career progression of developers, uh, you see the developers can get a senior lead principal positions. They can even become distinguished developers at some companies like Google. Mm -hmm. um, and, and with that, comes the uh, responsibility of like uh, you know uh, being someone in the industry like mm -hmm. having a name building a reputation and that is associated there is some sort of symbiosis with the company you work for and um, you know provided that you have a tone and ideas that match the company you work for then you know it's all good but there is a name there is an identity and i wonder why are technical writers like stuck to say senior tech writer and you, you can't be a distinguished tech writer. You can't be maybe someone out there talking about taking a writing as a craft or even just, you know, um, going beyond what is just plain anonymous documentation. I know this is a rather taboo topic in, uh, and what we thread in the Red Docs community the other day in Slack and, and some people were just, you know, horrified by the idea of stamping their name on docs. Uh, or maybe more with the idea of having to stand their name to docs, like, you know, because authorship maybe should be something voluntary. But I will just start with, with that question, like, you know, with that suggestion that identity, being someone at work and, and beyond your work, 
is, is healthy, there's some people who might be seeking that, some others don't, and that's fully respectable, right? But we shouldn't be closing that door, I think. But um, yeah, let's, let's hear your thoughts too. I think it's an interesting connection between career progression and your own identity in documentation. I had never, I'd never heard that connection before. Um, uh, it's interesting. So you're saying like with developers, developers sort of have a name and a brand and a persona in a community that helps propel their momentum in their career progression from one company to another or within the same company. Yeah, a, yeah, um, yeah. Uh, yeah I've, I've been working with um, on some on some career progression tracks uh, at previous companies, and um, trying to mimic a bit what was happening with developers. And with developers, beyond a certain point, like principle, say, um, you have to you have to be around in the community. You have to have like a name, and you're see we are seeing that with the, the um, with the current dev rel trends, developer relationship. And, and in some cases, I have the feeling that DevRels are like eating a bit, you know, eating away the, the dev docs space by just <laughs> being there as, as someone, as opposed to, to nobody explaining technical stuff to people. And I, I know that, you know, it's tricky. This should be the matter of, I don't know how many uh, podcasts, but um, there is like also there a relationship, which is very complex between DevRel and dev docs done by technical writers. And but I wonder if there isn't maybe identity and, and personality what is really boosting DevRel there, and what and what is the benefit? Like, is it something that technical writers could also benefit from? I've already got so many questions. I, I actually, I but although firstly, strangely, I want to turn the question to Tom ever so slightly because I would argue that Tom is one of these people in the community who is a personality. Yeah. But I would actually like to. I know from Tom is. Do you get to, is, does that matter in your day job? <laughs> Sadly, uh, no, it does not seem to matter. I mean, mm. think about, okay, um, the number of people who read blogs and who are kind of participating online is much, much smaller than we realize. Yeah, you know, for if, sure. I, if I go into a workplace, first of all, I interact with a bunch of engineers and product managers who yeah. don't know anything about the tech comm space, but even within the tech comm space, the number of tech writers who are kind of active online, I'm guessing 30%, 25%. Mm. And then uh, even though you could, you could have a great reputation, you come into a company, you've got to prove yourself from ground zero. Nobody yep. gives you yeah. much of a benefit of a doubt. It's like, you've got to, you've got to prove that you're, awesome all over again. You've got to hit home run after home run after home run and slowly build up your reputation. Um, I mean, sure, maybe a little bit. People may know you from, from online interactions and, and they may give you more, uh, more of an ear. But yeah, I, I don't know. Honestly, I think the tech comm sphere is so small and so non-influential outside of tech comm itself. It doesn't really matter a whole lot, unfortunately. <laughs> At least that's been my experience. Maybe it's different right. in different places. Well, that said, a lot of doors have opened for me because of yeah. uh, just yeah. being known in the community. Like yeah. people, I, yeah, most most jobs that I've tried to, to get, like I feel like I get the job before I even um, finish the interview process just because somebody is like championing me on the inside. Yeah. So, yeah. Anyway. It's, 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 it's yeah. It's definitely something, uh, you know, if I were like a, an engineering manager or a writer's manager uh, in charge of promotions, it's, something, it's certainly something that we consider for promoting writers beyond the senior uh, or, or lead role, right? And, uh, but it's, it's, it's not that common, actually, as you said, um, to be like a, a visible in the community. And the size, yeah, it's, it's appallingly small. It's, that's a bit sad, but... Um, um, it's not like the dev space is is huge either when you compare it to that, other. That's actually what I was uh, going to ask. Dev. Would you would you would you say that it's actually any different, or is it just because again we're people who pay attention? Mm -hmm. um, I can think of you know certain people who are infamous for certain frameworks and and tools that people use, but in their day job, apart from what Tom said, and I can say I probably had the same experience that people you you kind of have a foot in the door of a job just because of your 
your experience and, and your reputation and as long as you're not a, a bad person i'm trying to think of a way of not you know you kind it helps but um and i wonder with developers if it's actually that different because your day job uh, i don't know it depends because you do get those places where sometimes you're kind of paid to work on your side project in some companies because that side project is important to the company so maybe it it it's a little different there. I don't think I know of any tech writers like that, unless you work for an open source company. It's not like, oh, we're hiring you for your documentation. You can carry on working on it for free in the company. I don't think that's ever really going to happen, you know? So maybe that's yeah. the only kind of dynamic that's different. There's another, um, another aspect to this that I think is really interesting and worth mentioning. Uh, so Fab Fabri, when you initially brought up this topic, you, you wanted to connect like uh, a writer's, um, sorry uh you want to have the writer's identity associated with what they write you know tying yeah. up to their ability to progress in their career that assumes that people value writing actually <laughs> most people when you want to progress in your career they value strategic uh shaping of content content strategy type topics uh, how do you how do you improve the quality of the API documentation portal? How do you improve user satisfaction? How do you like align engineers toward contributions and you know uh, in improve the status of the doc group in your in your program and and all? Yeah, honestly, like a lot of um, a lot of like higher level managers and lead tech writers and senior tech writers end up doing more strat strategic work that isn't really writing than writing you, you you try to like figure out what's wrong with your doc site and and where the information should be coming from and you delegate writers to yeah. to to do it um so yeah i mean that that kind of strategic shaping how do you recognize that you, you don't really um it's right. sort of invisible and only people yeah. within the company would know what your your part of it was. Mm. I think that's that's a very good point, and I think it brings up the the, uh, the topic of of the content types that really deserve authorship. And we were having this, this you know, it was in the chat uh, the other day about this topic. And like, you wouldn't probably sign or have your name stamped to a troubleshooting article um, because, of course, I mean, credibility is a pillar of UX. But in that particular case, authorship doesn't really add anything to, to a piece that is meant to solve a problem in two minutes, right? So but if you're talking about like a complex architecture topic, maybe, you know, if, if it really shows uh, how deep your knowledge is of a platform, then you, would, you may want to consider, like you, you would probably have a continuum that starts from troubleshooting articles and ends with, say, ebooks. And in that continuum, the level of authorship you, you may require and the level of strategic thinking and involvement is, is really different. Two, two things have come off here. I'm going to go down one path first. And this is an interesting one where you talk about, you know, generally on most documentation, there are some sites where this is not the case, like the Microsoft ones, for example. Um, if it's closed source, you, you don't see who wrote it. If it's open yeah. source, you can find who wrote it if you wanted to. Indeed. And I would say a lot of people don't, but it has happened. I have actually had on some open source projects, like people contact me because they see your name and they go, oh, they'll help me or something like that. Um, so there is kind of an attachment to authorship there. And then, you know, on a GitHub profile or whatever it may be, you can kind of see like what other people what else they've worked on and that kind of thing. Um, so there's a little bit of that. I don't know how much that really comes into play, but there is at least a... There's a paper trail that people can find if they wanted to. Um, the second point I was going to say, which I think you're going into, is I suppose for the aspiring writer who does want to show their personality, um, there's nothing stopping you, of course, doing blogs, books, courses, videos, right. um, where where it's much. There's always an attribution, unless you're doing ghostwriting. There's always an attribution to a person. Um, but I, I do find it interesting you say there's like this dividing line. It's not like documentation takes any less time than a book in the long no. run. So why isn't your name on it? I mean, apart from the fact that with a lot of companies, it is multiple authors, but not always. <laughs> you know, um, 
coming back to the idea of like the uh, brand identity and, and influence, what about a Stack Overflow profile? Um, if you if you answer a lot of threads on Stack Overflow and you have this tremendous reputation on Stack Overflow, couldn't that be something that boosts your career? I mean, you definitely get a lot of credibility yeah. among engineers if you yeah. are like this uh, really really influential player with with a track record and a knowledge domain. I mean, I my Stack Overflow profile is terrible. I I don't really. I mean, I'm not like a technical expert on something that I'm participating on Stack Overflow about, but. I don't think anyone's is good anymore, to be fair. But. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or, or even like your GitHub profile, right? Like you can look to see how much people participate and commit and so on. It's, I think most people are, are really just more interested in like um, having some kind of writer portfolio, uh, even if they can't yeah. say, um, even if they can't say that they, or, or they can't put their name on the docs if they can just like have it as hey i wrote this and it's in the public domain and show it to employers that is that is huge i've met so many people working in internal docs that are yeah. incredibly frustrated that they don't have any proof that they're that yep. they've written some you know incredibly awesome uh technical documentation they can't show it and they they end up in these interviews having to write new samples from scratch that don't really yeah. showcase their their skills yeah. yeah yeah the ndas the ndas uh, i've had some some documents that i wrote for you know under ndas internal docs and unfortunately could never show them because of that you know um but the the thing with open source documentation is is i think it's, it's fantastic how it's it's opening writing up also for inspection and you yeah. know for collaboration it changes really everything. You can have Microsoft documents, as you said before, have the names of all the contributors and well, the, the mugshots, yep. at least the, the avatars. Um, that is great. And yep. but I think it also this also brings a significant change. And the change is that you know people may contact you about that, and you become <laughs> like also first line uh, support in a way, and voluntarily. Yep, and uh, yep. and I and I know many writers who are actively escaping that, yep. and are seeking like in technical writing they are seeking like a refuge from uh, contact direct contact with customers and having to even just show their their name anywhere, yep. and that is interesting. This was actually something I wrote down as a as a as a question, but I will say I did have that happen, especially when I was in the Ethereum space, which is a bit kind of ramshackle yep. as it was. People would reach out to me all the time. It's like, how do I do this? And like, can you tell me how to get a token? And I'm like, oh. anyway, but um, that's actually something you just said there that I found quite interesting. I mean, developers obviously are in this as well, but you have this kind of division. There's a lot of developers you never hear from. And there's a lot of these, I hate the phrase, but it's the best thing I can think of, these rock star developers. Um, but yeah, I was actually, I wrote this down when we were starting with the intro. Is anonymity and kind of liking to be in the sidelines a little bit of a tech writer personality trait? <laughs> Is it intention they intentionally maybe seek out the role because it's a little more anonymous? I, I remember when Atlassian turned off comments on their documentation, uh, mm. probably like, I don't know, seven years ago or something, but it was this huge move because they the, the writers would write an article and then people would come to the article and they need help. They'd start this comment thread. The writer would be sucked in. And eventually they were the Atlassian doc team was like, we're not going to do this. Um, you know, go to support for help. We're going to turn off comments, even though it's like a f hallmark feature of our platform on docs. Um, but yeah, it's, it seems, it seems like an interesting question. Like if you if you do put your name out there, you're putting yourself up as a as a contact point for people who are just like drowning, trying to reach anybody uh, for help. And You'll do. Yeah. <laughs> I think you know in, in in those cases, I think companies need to be uh, like fully aware of their content strategy. Like you you can't you can't be a publisher because anyone having anything on the web uh, is a publisher these days. And it's not really different from any media um, from a technical perspective. Like there's names, there's content, and, and people can just go and ask questions. But companies really must realize that if they put people on the front line like that, uh, they have to defend uh, 
their people and their authors like any, say, newspaper would do. And it's just unfair to say, and, and we had this conversation on, on Slack, and, and some people were telling like horror stories of, you know, uh, having their names and documentation and, and being accused of stuff not working, etc. And the company just washing their hands. And that's, that's not a good thing to do. If you have authors, and anyone can be an author when you push, you push content on websites, well, you have to take care of them. You have to defend them, right? And, and, and also ship, if it's voluntary, um, you know, you have to be there for your writers. If it's not voluntary, you know, that's even more reason to, to be there and protect contact uh, information, et cetera. Well, do you, sorry, you go ahead, Tom. Um, I was just going to say one um, byproduct of living in a Git world is that now, like, regardless of whether somebody attaches their name, you can, at least internally, easily find out who the main authors of docs are and you have a great starting point. I mean, it doesn't connect with like your community and so on usually unless you're in the open source space. But I use this all the time when I'm trying to find out who to, who to go to for information. Having that like history of authorship, you can see who is actually contributing substantial information is, is huge, right? And then I'm sure engineers have the same complaints like, why are you reaching out to me? I don't own this thing, but where else do you go? Well, do you still maintain this? Why can't you? Why can't you support me on your free project at two in the morning? <laughs> and, and, you know, and, and we are generally we are generally very friendly uh, people, tech writers. I mean, it's it's our job to you know reach out to engineers and be patient generally. Um, but I, I wonder if you know if this trend of open source documentation continues and and it evolves, I fear that we may just become like the Linux kernel maintainers in terms of you know, a friendliness, like, you know, people coming to you after years of questions and, and you just uh, spell back uh, RTFM or something. Um, I don't know how this will evolve, but um, maybe backtracking a bit to, to the initial question, I think technical writers come from many, many backgrounds. And yeah. like some of us, like in my case, I came from, from tech journalism. So of course there's, you know, there's identity there, lots of personality, and then you do a job where your face and name maybe disappear, and that's fine. But um, and then other people maybe come from engineering or mm. uh, say uh, you know other other backgrounds, and and uh, where identity is not a it's not an issue, it's not a thing. Um, but yeah, in general, it seems that the profession draws more the introvert. It's a tough question, but what do you think? I don't know if it's any more or less than developers. Maybe right. the development field has brought out less or well, more extroverts than before, just because the, the pay is good. So a lot of people are just like, I'll be a developer. I never really cared before because it pays good. And maybe there's a kind of a bigger field of people who are doing it. No, not for the, not for the wrong reasons, but not out of pure passion. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, Although it's possibly tech writers in the in the same boat, I'm not sure. Yeah. There's one one aspect that I I um, think is worth mentioning in terms of like introversion and and promoting yourself, uh, and that's when you do publish documentation. Do you market it internally as like, hey, we published all this great content? Mm -hmm. This is usually something that writers don't do, and it's it's a uh, it's a major mistake not to do it. But when you you write a bunch of stuff, your team has things they've done. How do you communicate that out to everybody? It's like if you were to write a blog post and then not post it anywhere yeah. on, yeah. don't share it on any social channel. Nobody sees it, nobody nobody really uh, yeah. you know, engages. Yeah. When, I've, when I've shared out in the past, like, hey, you know, this past month our team published these five articles and those are some metrics and so on. People love that. Yep. It's a way to yep. really brand and, yep. and attach yourself to docs without literally, literally putting your name on it. Hmm. Uh, yeah. Have you, ever, have I, you um, ever done that? Yeah, but I think it's easier for lone writers, um, <laughs> like in my case. Yeah. <laughs> if you are, you know, if you're working in a team, uh, those rules of engagement must be really clear for the whole team. Otherwise, it's it may look like you're tooting your own horn, and um, you know. Um, this is this makes for very awkward team dynamics sometimes. So uh, it's, it's, it's that expectation must be set up front within the team that, that you know we take our content and we share it and and that's something positive. Yeah. Um, 
you know, that's that's very important. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I would definitely make clear like which authors wrote which content, you know, that you're sharing so that it doesn't come yeah. across as if you're writing everything. But actually, Tom, you've given me a great segue because I must admit, I probably slightly mistitled this um, this episode. Uh, but I think this is a perfect point to maybe go into that aspect of it. It's like, OK, as a lone writer, if you want to be a personality and give personality, it's, it's kind of easier because it's just you. Obviously, there's certain boundaries and there'll be review and things like that. But if you are a team, especially even on an open source project, how do you allow people to give personality but right. not make it a big mess? Yeah. <laughs> uh, I think personality is the wrong description for what we're totally talking about. I mean, what mm -hmm. we're talking about is like attaching bylines to content, really. No, no, for sure, really. for sure. For sure. I've kind of taken, I'm taking the dual meaning of the word here now. And yeah. taking it to the other bit of like, if you do want to do that, right? Yeah. And you are in a team. How do you do it consistently so that each writer gets to be a personality and bring personality, but not make it an inconsistent, incoherent mess? That's where you um, totally need to have have some kind of like um, little author attribution to the article, right? Then it's like, hey, it's this it's this Tom guy. It's going to be some long winded thing versus <laughs> <laughs> versus. Chris, it's going to be, uh, you know, lively and fun to read. <laughs> <laughs> but, but what, well, if, what think, if there's multiple authors on one document? Uh, that's, that's kind of more where I was going. I don't know. <laughs> well, you, you, you would need, uh, you need editors, right? Which is, uh. which is a seldom seen uh, job at, at tech companies, I would say. But um, an editor would ensure that um, the content coming from, from many different people with different styles fit the purpose of the piece and, and the content type, I think. Hmm. Uh, while preserving uh, each style, hopefully. <laughs> Hard to say, isn't it? I think people always think that the editor strips that all away, but I mean, otherwise, that's not true. Otherwise, many, many works of fiction would just all be the same. So. The, 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 biggest, the, biggest, the biggest question is, let's say that uh, a company uh, you know, uh, adopts this policy of uh, stamping the names of the tech writers on the docs hmm. um, and allowing them to have their own style. What happens if the style of a writer goes against the general voice and tone of the company? Um, that's an interesting situation. Like you would have that in the newspaper, and I think a newspaper would hire writers for a certain mm -hmm. style and, and tone and voice. But if it happens all of a sudden that, that a, um, a technical writer um, shop opens up and goes the other way, well, you have to be careful there, right? It seems like mostly the personality aspect only comes through with third party independent authors like uh, David Pogue mm. or somebody writing about a product. I, I've never been in a place where I felt like I could have much personality. That said, most companies do try to like instill a personality of like friendly, positive, straightforward, transparent, yeah. you know, and, and that's actually a lot harder than than maybe it seems but coming across as as that person uh when when you have stuff that's like cryptic or you have to lie in your docs you know pretend that it works great when it's a house of cards kind of thing um can be tricky uh yeah anyway. yeah this is interesting like um imagine that we are baristas at starbucks like how much personality can you inject into that <laughs> flow of giving out a coffee right or say or spelling a name like there's there's very little room for uh you, for you've just given there. several several uh <laughs> several places where they could but anyway yeah <laughs> this is the experience it it does seem like um when i look back at my writing from when i was in college to now uh my writing in college used to be way a lot of adjectives descriptive flowery long sentences and so on and over the course of my career my writing has become much simpler straightforward i i stopped you know looking up the ten dollar words it's now just like the simplified vocabulary and in some ways it's sort of depressing it's like um you know at one time i felt a lot more expressive uh, what do you what do you guys think if you had the full green light to inject personality into your writing what would it look like? Do you even like, can you even uh, envision what it would, what your personality for your, your writing persona would be? Chris, 
You, you start from Chris. <laughs> um, so I think I've become so uh, divorced from my personality in my day job writing. I really pour it out in like my fiction and my blogs and other things. So I almost, I almost don't do it anymore. If, if it was to be anything, it would be that it's so stripped back and so to the point and so simple. But it's not really personality. That's just the kind of what you get used to. Yeah. And then I take out my personality elsewhere. Like, for example, you know, I would generally be writing in American English, very concise sentences. And when it comes to my fiction work, I will be unashamedly non-American English, use all sorts of phrasing I shouldn't and all sorts of nonsense filler words that I shouldn't because I can. And so I, I kind of yeah. put, take my personality elsewhere, I think. So. <laughs> no, I think, you know, it's, it's it's within the constraint of, of, a, of a job and, and a product, it's, it's difficult. But I think what, what makes us ourselves is not just the way we maybe we write or the word we choose, but also is there is our interests, right? So I, I would gladly like sign a, a rather complicated conceptual doc where I explain, say, a very complicated architecture, maybe using metaphors. I love metaphors, right? And it's something that sometimes is a bit frowned upon, uh, rightly so, because they are very difficult to handle and very uh, cultural at times, right? Um, and sometimes, like, like there are traits to writers, right? So I, I love to use call-outs, for instance, to seek like some sort of complicity with the reader. Um, and, and those are the little things, I think, from yourself that can slip in your writing without, you know, totally uh, ruining it. <laughs> I, I like my my personality if I have one in writing for docs would be to be 100% transparent about everything. I mean if something's mm. complicated, I would like to come out and just say, "Hey, we acknowledge this is like really complicated and you're going to have to follow that is each a common, step." Uh, a common trait of many I, tech writer too. It's like you can always spot developer written docs because it's always like this is really easy and then tech writers come <laughs> and go no, it's not. <laughs> yeah, and, and, and you, don't, you don't need a flowery prose, right? I mean, I just look at, uh, say, Cormac McCarty or Hemingway. It's, you know, you have that. Uh, not saying we are near that level at all. We are not. <laughs> but, um, what about, what about, um, what about humor? This is complicated. What about uh, humor, like, in code samples, like picking some names, maybe, for variables, you know, that sort of thing is... I, I, I tend to avoid it personally. Like, yeah, don't developers but... like getting code samples? With yeah, like, jokes, I don't know. Uh, yeah, put some, it, some jokes. Actually, so, some so I have a really uh, precedent, pres prescient example here. Huh. I was watching um, the video, some videos from WWDC, the Apple Developer Conference, on their new DocC thing. And they had this whole example of a sloth creator app they were making. And I must admit, within about two minutes, it was really cringeworthy. And it's like, oh, <laughs> just, I, I don't know. And, and so it's weird. Like, it wasn't humor, but they were trying to add this, like, hey, we're so friendly. But I could just imagine all these developers just being, like, swearing about Xcode and things. It's like, you know, and sometimes, it, and actually, you mentioned at Atlassian earlier. They did a good mm -hmm. talk at the Prague conference a couple of years ago around this very subject, that this this level of humor can sometimes backfire if people are annoyed with you and yeah, stuff like that yeah. I don't know. <laughs> uh, speaking I, of, of backfiring oh sorry tom go ahead no 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 i don't really have anything go ahead no, just you know <laughs> speaking of backfiring uh there's there's many people I, I was a bit surprised um but maybe after not that much but i was surprised initially to see uh all the pushback from the idea of having identity attached to documentation, mm -hmm. to technical documentation. And we are sort of assuming where we're talking here, we're sort of giving for granted that it can be a good idea. But um, are we maybe wrong? Like uh, there's someone, there's lots of people who would think this is a horrible idea. Mm -hmm. And I want to understand why. And I want you to understand what is the real issue there, you know? Because the idea of identity doesn't seem, you know, if it's a voluntary choice, the idea of having it, you, you know, being yourself at work of, or just creating something with where you have collaborated and have your name on it doesn't seem negative to me at a first glance. But then, what is it, maybe organizational dynamics or it's just the way people consume information on the internet that is just too aggressive? Uh, I don't know. Well, 
I mean, I'm, I'm open to, to all ideas and so on, but just to kind of uh, present reasons why people wouldn't want to have their identity on the docs, a lot of times you don't author something from scratch. You get it from engineers right. and then like push it through product managers. And by the time you get to it, you've added maybe 25% to it. And it's like, you know, it's, it's fine as documentation, but I don't want to like promote this as something my uh, being my own and like associate it entirely with me. I'm just sort of an editor and a curator yeah. for many things. And then uh, coming back to the support point, right? If like you come out as like the lead author on something, you are setting yourself up for a lot of questions from internal, external people and ownership <laughs> and so on. And, you know, it's like you're just one component of, of a larger authoring and publishing machine. And so maybe that's why people are like, yeah, yeah. I don't need to be, you know, the face of this which, article. Which makes me wonder, Tom, like um, with your blog, do you, do you often get like, um, well, I hope you don't get aggressive comments or, or emails, but uh, do you get tons of requests for help? Like, how, how, how does it look like? Wait, do I get, wait, ask that again? Are you asking? Do, do you get like tons of, tons of requests for help? Um, oh, you know? tons of requests. Uh, yeah, I mean, sometimes um, even when I publish a guest article, people will ask uh, for help and so on. I mean, I, I do get, I get a million people asking me, Hey, how do I break into te into technical writing? I'm transitioning right. from this, and what do I need in order to get a job uh, in technical yeah. writing? So many yeah. newbies are just like reaching out. They're like, and then of course the gazillion students who have been assigned to like ask a technical writer some questions for an assignment. I'm like, oh my gosh, please don't don't ask me that. It, it's Hundreds answering of people. your question, Fabrizio. <laughs> yeah, <but> this, <laughs> do do um, I mean do do email filters work for that? Like I was wondering that. Like, is it a way of just you know coping with this maybe on a technical level uh, because if, well, if that I mean, if that is the case maybe you can have authorship on documentation uh, if you can filter out yeah. the noise yeah and and i do on in my contact page i say hey really you should actually join the write the doc slack and ask your question there you'll get right. a whole lot better you know interaction and response and you know if that doesn't work try posting it somewhere else like the subreddit on on reddit the technical writing subreddit um and as a last resort people can contact me and then i'm like i might i might take two days before i get back to you thousand uh, person slack channel reddit tom in that order <laughs> yeah. and a lot of times people have questions and i don't have answers to them i mean people uh, a lot of times come right, to me with api right. questions that are pretty deep and i'm like you know what sorry i i don't know uh, so yeah there's there's that i so i have one final question because we're gonna have to wrap up soonish i'm sorry it's right. a little bit of a short episode um so Fabrizio, you want you want your personality out there, <laughs> and, and it seems like you're you're one of a minority. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so it seems. Um, is doing blog posts and presentations and things like that is that is that enough? Yes. No. I mean, yes, yeah. it is in a way, and and you know, I thought a lot about this in the in the past days. Like, um, you know, being a technical writer uh, is uh, very often is is the life of anonymity and we are, we're mostly fine with that we're mostly it's fine like with a that superhero I mean, Fabrizio. It's like yeah a something like that like <laughs> but then you know people who like myself uh want a bit more than maybe exposure which you know you you can frown upon it or you can like that or whatever but um maybe we do need an outlet and that mm. is an interesting observation that i would you know it's a suggestion i would make for for most uh writers managers um in in teams is you have a writer who wants to you know, get more exposure, find an outlet for them. Like uh, most companies have tech blocks. So that's yep. a way, yep. Yep. Uh, or uh, maybe a collaboration with marketing. And I mean, there are ways where a tech writer can, and I think you've done lots of tech marketing too, Chris. So yeah, um, yeah. and, and I'm, I'm the, yeah. the only writer at the company I'm currently at. So I'm doing both there as well. Yeah. yeah, so I think it's, it's sometimes you just need to get a bit creative and mm. there are ways where you can, you know, along that spectrum of content uh, within a constructive setting, there's content you can create that has your name on it. Yep. And, yep. and that I think is a good balance with the anonymous content on a day-to-day -day basis. Yep. All right, so how can people 
find out more about you, Fabrizio. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have perfect uh, question to ask. Right, and my uh, my personal website is um, passo.uno. I think we'll probably have to link it somewhere because okay. it's Italian, but. Um, yeah, I have uh, some some thoughts there, and I will probably blog about this topic because it's it's just so exciting. So, okay, Tom, this 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 blog that you get millions of people contacting you. How could people find out more about you? Oh, um, if you, you know, know, I, if you I, I actually would like to. <laughs> I would like to remain anonymous. <laughs> I'm just gonna slip into oblivion. <laughs> no, uh, fair enough. Find, I, my blog, I'd rather be writing dot com. I, I do find it to be a great outlet. I yep. mean, definitely, uh, I recommend like, you know, the, there's a lot of opportunity to create content in many different spaces. And yeah, and in those many spaces from corporate blogs, to personal blogs to other tech journalism, you can brand your identity, you can let your personality come out. Uh, you know, there, there are Indeed. great Indeed. opportunities. And yeah. then and then once you got your fill, go back to your anonymous documentation role and, and it's Which good sometimes balance. can be refreshing, right? I mean, it's, <laughs> that is just good to, be, to remain anonymous. <laughs> I kind of like those two sides. It is a little bit like a superhero, but yeah. Um, and for, yeah, for me, you can find me on kristenschiller.com. You can find some of that weird fiction stuff, actually, as well as uh, links to documentation, too. Um, Chris, Chris, wait, wait. I, I've been wanting to ask you this for the longest time. Do you have I, a chinchilla? Where's the chinchilla coming from? No, it's, it's actually just his random nickname that came at high school many, many, many years ago. And it was one that I didn't mind and it stuck. I did have some photos taken with one once some time ago. But okay. they're actually banned in a lot, as pets in a lot of countries these days. So, oh, <laughs> yeah. so yeah. I have a cat, which is actually currently making quite a lot of noise. I don't know if you could hear it. <laughs> <laughs> Chris Cat is not so interesting. Um, <laughs> And yeah, for the podcast, hopefully we'll be back again soon. I think uh, I think lots of lots of lots of us needed a slight break for a little while. I think we're all kind of coming back to uh, to the to to things again. Um, so it's podcast the docs org. You can find all of us on Slack. I think I'm Chris something. Ford. Tom's yeah. Tom Johnson. Fabrizio, how can people reach out to you on the the write the docs Slack? Oh, you probably just start typing F something and I'll be there somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> no pun intended. No pun intended. Yes, that was a dangerous uh, point to end on. Um, yeah, and uh, please reach out to us if you would like to talk on a future episode. Um, we're definitely always looking for people who have got something, a, an itch they want to scratch like Fabrizio did. And we'll hopefully be back in a, in a month or so for the next one, not four or five months or whatever it was since the last one. Uh, any final words anyone would like to add? Or shall we use the immortal final words? I'm good. Okay. I'll have to channel my inner Jared and to say, and remember, docs, or it didn't happen. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> <laughs>